Good afternoon. This is the April 13th, 2021 budget meeting of special work session of the Board of Trustees. Um, we're expecting to be joined tonight by some meeting uh, members of the budget committee, as well as Victor Tofer, who will be here any moment, I'm sure. Um, can I have a motion to open the meeting, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And um, let's see who's here. There's Victor. Welcome. We just opened the meeting. You missed nothing. Um, all right. We have some members of the budget committee here tonight. So um, when it's time for questions, I'm happy to, um, you know, let's bring them in because we want to hear their voices too. Um, Dan? Yes, Sarma? So yes. are, are you leading the discussion tonight? Is Augie, who, who's planning um, on? I, I, I will be uh, leading the discussion on the uh, on the various budget items. Uh, I assume you want to do the capital budget first, or uh, do you want to talk about the other items, the uh, sewer fund or the water fund? Uh, let's start with the capital budget, if, if that's fine with everyone yeah. else. Yes. Great. Uh, OK, let me uh, share my screen. Uh, Right screen to share. Okay, I think everyone can see the um, uh, the draft capital budget. Yes, is this the same email that we received earlier today? Yes, it is. Great, thank you. So, uh, as I as I noted in the email. Um, you know, some of the projects uh, have been deferred to outer years. Some of the projects that were uh, included in last year's budget that were deferred to this year's budget, you'll see in the 21-22 uh, column. So, uh, sorry, Dan. Yes. I just want to be on the same page. This, what page of our budget is that? Uh, this is not in the budget. One, this is the- I um, one, 108. Yeah, but 109? this is the- uh, I don't think this is this not this isn't included in the uh, tender budget. This is a document that I just updated and sent out uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, a little bit before 3 p.m. Uh, do, do you want, do you need me to send it to you again, or do you have it, or can you see this? Or? Well, I, I'll 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 trace it while you explain it. So okay. go ahead. As long as it's on the screen, I can follow. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, you know, like I like I mentioned, stuff that was deferred from last year or sorry the current year uh is identified in in this uh fiscal year or the upcoming fiscal year um uh, you know items we defer you know some items we just really can't defer more than one year uh really when it comes to our fleet replacement schedule especially with the public works you know you know we try to be ahead of well, on the curve not ahead of the curve but on the curve uh when it comes to replacing our vehicles because at, at a certain point, once it succeeded its useful life, you know, you have warranty issues, the vehicles uh, just become uh, you know, money drains. They, they, they sometimes they'll just cost a lot more to maintain. And, you know, the, uh, it's, it just, there's no value there anymore. And if we can uh, dispose of the vehicles at the right time, we'll also maximize uh, the amount of money we can get to get for them through auction. Uh, the budget is laid out is in, uh, alphabetical order by department. Um, so I'll just uh, kind of go over some of these items and uh, uh, if you have questions on the board, just uh, let me know as I go along. Um, uh, first item for uh, the building department is municipality five. Uh, you know, the looking at uh, the uh, proposal we received, it's approximately 60,000 uh, for the software and about 15,000 for the first year of uh, uh, licensing. So we're proposing uh, in the 21-22 year to uh, charge that towards the capital budget. And in future years, the maintenance would be included in the operating budget. Uh, pool vehicles for the building department. Uh, you know, uh, let's stay on municipal, municipality five for a minute. Does that include everything or are there add-ons or other packages that we need that uh, are not included in here? This includes everything. There are various uh, modules. Uh, I use the bottom line cost for all the modules and the first year 
uh, software maintenance. And that, in, uh, and that includes the training and everything else? Correct. I, I, I think we've shared that proposal with you. If not, I can uh, make sure that the board uh, gets a copy of it. Uh, on the, the pool vehicles, EV means uh, uh, electric. Uh, the, uh, we have two very old uh, vehicles in the building department pool. I think we have a, a 2005 uh, uh, Ford Crown Victoria, which, you know, those are hand-me-downs from department after department after department, and then a 2006 Ford Focus, which is really on its last legs. Uh, so we've been looking to maintain the fleet of our building department vehicles. This was deferred from this year. Uh, so the 70,000 will be for two uh, EVs, and then going forward, we're including, you know, 375, 37, 540 just to uh, keep on top of, of the fleet. Uh, uh, plotter, printer, scanner, I think for the building part, that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, uh, the uh, EV charger, uh, I have to uh, refine this, but uh, we received a grant for, I think uh, around $98,000 for uh, multiple EV stations throughout the village. Uh, we've been looking at a second one over at Hunter Deck on the lower level uh, in the uh, uh, the Playhouse Theater lot on, off of Phyllis Park Road uh, on Old Way Plains Road by the area that the uh, we recently uh, the board uh, you know uh, demapped that old uh, section of Old White Plains Road uh, and a couple other locations, but had preliminary discussions with a, a vendor who's on contract, but uh, that'll be more information as we move along. Uh, the Community Counseling Center, uh, you know, the, uh, it needs a lot of work. Uh, we are uh, a recent application uh, for a Preserve New York grant to do a building uh, condition report. Uh, we're going to work with uh, a firm that uh, we've worked with in the past on the Community Counseling Center and also the Hillside Avenue Bridge for uh, the historic recordation uh, because of the vintage of the building because of our application uh, to be on the national register of historic places uh, the 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 work we have, will need to do in that building has to be uh, sensitive and, and done uh, in accordance with uh, proper guidelines to maintain the historic character and nature of the building and um, i think uh, excuse me one second uh, so I didn't want to be interrupted by the phone. Um, uh, lower level structural repairs, there's some structural issues we need to take care of in the basement. Um, clerk treasurer's office, uh, you know, these are various items. I think a lot, you know, several of them were deferred from last year. Uh, again, I think self-explanatory, microfilm conversion. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna put Augie on the hot seat, but uh, if you have questions, I'm sure he could answer that. Uh, monitors, hardware, this is all, IT stuff. Uh, uh, the courtroom, we have the exit doors, which is something we've been, we have to get to at some point. Obviously, the fact that we haven't been able to use the courtroom for the last year is, you know, kind of put this on, on the back burner. Um, uh, th this is all uh, the DPW stuff. Uh, these are all, you know, all various pieces of equipment. It's uh, in accordance with uh, Tony's fleet replacement schedule. Uh, it extends on to the next page. Uh, I, I, if I don't have, I can answer general questions about the vehicles, but and what they do, but uh, it, it's all pretty you know, straightforward. Um, the the engineering department. Uh, one of the things we have talked about doing is after we completed the paving, uh, conducting what's known as a pavement management survey, or I'll call it a, a, pave, a pavement condition index (PCI). Uh, basically, that what you do there is you hire an engineering firm. They will uh, drive throughout the village, uh, assess all of the roads, help develop a plan and schedule for uh, road resurfacing. Uh, you know, it, it really uh, makes the the process of the decision making for resurfacing, you know, totally apolitical. You know, you have a report, you understand what your issues are. Uh, and it helps better justify and 
rationalize the funds that are spent on the paving program. Um, and and that's paving, something we can't do in house, Dan? No, no. I mean, this is, there are specialized companies that do this. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I, I did one, I think, I'll say in 2008, 2009, um, you know, we had to bring in a firm from Indiana to do it for us. Uh, but uh, there are com there are special there are companies that do this as a specialty. It it really is uh, you know you want to have that uh, that that engineering stamp on this because it's um, it's technical. It involves you know really literally driving every single road. Uh, you know a lot of times they'll have video cameras to document the condition, uh, understanding what's going on in the road, understanding the base, what's underneath the road. So it's um, it's it's really it's not something that can be done in house. But but Dan, um, yes. start off the the pavement condition index that the cost of that is not in this budget or on in the spreadsheet, right? No, it's right here. Well, pavement management survey. Um, I I I prefer the term pavement condition index because a lot of times they use the the first oh, letters of it. each item. 30, to, 30, got it. Thirty thousand yeah. dollars. I'm sorry. Got yeah. it. Um, the annual paving program. You know, we had talked about it, you know, maintaining what we've been able to do. We did that $5 million job several years ago. Um, obviously, this is a topic of maybe a topic of greater discussion among the board, but that's, you know, what we had put, this is what we had put in last year and just carrying those numbers forward. Okay. Um, uh, Southbury Avenue Siphon. Uh, this is a long term project that's been identified that we have a, a sewer issue at. Uh, on Southbury Avenue, I think this was first identified by Hernani, and you know we've just been kind of keeping as a placeholder in the budget because we know we have to take care of it. But you know we have we're already looking at you know ten to twelve million dollars in uh, the big sewer job that we're doing to comply with our order on consent. Um, fire department, just some miscellaneous vehicles. Um, if there was a you know a, a year after this, you'd see a big number for the replacement of an engine. So we have our next engine replacement scheduled for 26, 27, uh, but that's not in this year's, but you, you would see it next year. Uh, the uh, Harvard Master's office, uh, we have, you know, seawall repair and uh, we're, we're constantly looking at grants. Um, we have, uh, we actually had to make a, a six figure uh, repair to the seawall in the aftermath of Tropical Storm Issa Uh It was about $107,000. Uh, we're looking to uh, possibly uh, see if there's uh, mitigation grant funding as part of the FEMA money that's been allotted for uh, Issa Eas that we can possibly do some additional work. But uh, we, ha we haven't had a chance to really go over all of that with FEMA yet. Uh, but, you know, maintaining or repairing that seawall is a long-term and potentially very expensive program, not just from the structural stability of the wall, but also accounting for future sea level rise. And where are you anticipating the 603? I mean, we have a lot of seawalls, so I'm not sure where you're talking about. I think this was for an additional, uh, the, the um, uh, planning portion of the uh, of the repair of what we, the work we need to do. This would be where the West Basin. Uh, it'd really be the entire thing because you know we know we have issues on the West Basin. We had a failure on the East Basin, but regardless, I mean the entire uh, wall is you know coming up on almost 100 years now. Uh, it was built in the 1930s, and here we are in 2021. Um, it has lived its useful life. Yeah, under understood. Uh -huh. So I'm sorry. This six hundred three thousand is only for the planning phase. It does no yep. work. Great. Right. Thank you. Correct. You're going to spend six hundred three thousand to plan. This is between. Yeah, this is this is a complex project. I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, permitting, planning, legal. Uh, it, we're thousands and thousands of feet of, of wall. Uh, I'm pretty much well aware of seawall work. Yeah. 
So I understand in the East Basin, there was a failure in repaired. In the West Basin by the Coast Guard station, was that ever repaired or not? It has not been repaired. It has not failed yet. But, you know, we... we and it's to it, 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 but it's still cordoned off as a dangerous condition, correct? Correct. Um, docking gangway replacement. Uh, you know, we started it this year. We're going to continue it next year. Um, uh, the motor on the Harbmaster's boat. Uh, go, go back to the docks and gangways. Yep. Okay. You have a big grant? As a potential funding source, correct. Okay. We have problems with what we're doing there, and we need to straighten them out before we do any more. Yep. So uh, we're, uh, we are working on that right now. Um, I've, uh, we had a meeting, uh, myself, uh, Jeff LaRusso, uh, and I also reached out to AKRF to see if they could help us prepare all the, uh, uh, to get a proposal to help us prepare all the documentation and applications that we need to submit to the state. Uh, the Harbor Master's boat, uh, the motor needs to be repowered. I mean, it's, it's a, I think it's a 2003 Grady White. So, you know, it's, uh, and we've, oh, we've had it since 2010, 2011. And uh, you know, we put a lot of hours on it over the last 10 years. Uh, the crane repair rehab, uh, this is an item that we kind of kept as a uh, placeholder in the budget for several years, uh, always in the fifth year. And uh, on an annual basis, I would, you know, talk to our former harbor master, and you know, we thought that we could get a couple of additional years out of the crane, so we never moved it forward. But uh, uh, our old pettybone crane is uh, uh, you know, shoveled off the mortal coil, uh, and we're actually had to rent a piece of equipment this year, so it needs to be replaced. Uh, so, um, and because uh, you know, that, that's not what it says, it doesn't right. say replacement; it says repair and rehabilitate. Right. I will that's a, that. You can you can buy a crane uh, and a very good used crane for a lot less. We are we are looking at all of our options. I think this is a up you know kind of the maximum cost we'd be looking at. Uh, but you know this is literally we uh, had to we determined that we had to make the replacement within the last month. So it's I'm can just putting that there. Can I just get some understanding then about the priorities? Because it's listed as a priority um, three. And are you saying that well, in the last month it jumped to a priority something else? Not, well, in terms of I mean, the seawall is, I think, is kind of our biggest issue down there. That's yeah. a priority. Uh, and then you know we're in the we're in the midst of making our repairs to the docks and the gangway, so I, we've got to finish that up. And we were talking, we had thirty year old docks; they're, they're pretty antiquated. Um, so when compared to those other projects, um, it, I, I, I mean, I didn't rank it as like a traditional one through five as in most needy, okay. needy uh, SF. Um, the Harbor One boat overhaul, 15,000, uh, some money for, uh, renovations in some outer years, uh, replacement of the HVAC unit in a couple of years, um, you know, a lot of. Uh, over the past several years, we've had to replace a lot of our HVAC units, uh, and these weren't done for you know many years. Um, you know, the story I like to tell is you know here in the Brigada, uh, you know it's a 20-year-old building, HVAC HVAC units last 20 to 25 years. Um, we had a failure in the clerk's office a couple of years ago. The day we got the new unit up and running, the unit that serves my office here failed. And it got up to about 90 degrees in three hours. Uh, so yeah, I think we, we need to be more proactive in you know, replacing these HVAC units on a timely basis. Uh, and there's a truck replacement in the outer year. Um, yeah, we have the Army Corps project as a placeholder. Um, that's you know, $7.8 million. It might be more based on uh, additional uh, analysis from the Army Corps. Uh, yeah, I'm keeping the new village hall item here. Uh, that's a policy discussion. We really haven't done much on this in the last year. Oh, what? 
So $150,000 would be for designing a new village hall? Correct. Yeah, we've, um, then I have uh, the CDBG projects. Uh, we're still waiting on the contracts from Westchester County. Um, I've been told they're on the way. Uh, I spoke with our community liaison last Thursday and asked him again about that. This is for uh, money that was already uh, awarded to us. Um, then uh, we have the Mamaroneck Avenue item uh, and uh, possibly the Mount Pleasant intersection. The uh, That's a county intersection, but uh, if they basically told us if we can design something that uh, they'll agree to, they'll let us, they'll give us the the honor of paying for it. And, and we've talked about some options in the past with the board. Uh, the uh, the traffic signal at the Mamaroneck Prospect intersection needs to be upgraded. Uh, so I, I would like to move on that. Uh, Which intersection are you talking about? Uh, Mamaroneck Avenue and Prospect Avenue. Say again? Uh, Mamaroneck Avenue and Prospect Avenue, uh, yeah. the intersection up by Barley's. Uh, it's had a, uh, it, the, the signal needs to be, we got a failure in one of the heads and uh, we need to upgrade the signal or replace it. Um, village Hall windows, again, these, this is now to your project. Um, as I mentioned, the HVAC at various locations, uh, you know, some of these units can cost twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars just for one. So, you know, this is possibly looking at two a year. We likely have, you know, off the top of my head, fifteen to twenty units throughout all of our buildings. Uh, Tompkins Avenue bridge replacement. Uh, uh, I think I've shared with the board some issues that are known about the Tompkins Avenue bridge. Uh, we're looking to submit a grant to uh, the DOT under the Bridge New York program. Uh, without getting into the specifics, there are many bridges in Mamaroneck and we have agreements. We have an agreement with the town of Mamaroneck and the town of Rye about some of these fundings. Uh, the Tompkins, which I will spell correctly when I uh, upgrade this, uh, is 100% uh, the responsibility of the village. Uh, you know, we think it would probably have a maybe less complicated in some ways than when compared to Hillside, but you know, we have to go through many of the same regulatory hurdles uh, as it relates to consistency, as it relates to uh, historic recordation, because you know, there is no doubt that that bridge is eligible to be on the National Register of Historic Places. And that's something we're gonna have to uh, address as we go through this. Uh, the Grand Street Crosswalk, that's, uh, you know, installing a pedestrian countdown timer uh, and putting a crosswalk in. I think we're going to try and coordinate to get that done after the county does their work. Uh, but uh, we have the stabilization fund from the TOD, and we would propose to fund it through that. Uh, you know, we, we keeping the elevator at 169 as a placeholder. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Old folks firehouse. I think you know. Uh, Jerry spoke to the board about, uh, you know, possibly relocating some departments down to Old Hooks. So it would require some uh, remediation, design, construction to make it a, uh, a proper facility for a government operation. Uh, West Basin building consolidation, that's uh, the, uh, the, the little buildings on the West Basin. Uh, we you know, like to, if possible, uh, you know, remove those, build a new consolidated facility that can house all the operations as well as being, you know, above the baseline elevation. Uh, Short Tree Bridge, this is a... Dan, sorry, could you say which buildings? Is it the... Oh, it's the Police Marine Unit, the West Basin Locker Room, and the Senior Center. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to disparage those buildings, but they're, they're shacks, if, if you've seen them. I've seen them. Yeah. Uh, Shore Street Bridge. Uh, that's the uh, technically it's a culvert over uh, in Rye Neck. Uh, we share that with the town of Rye. Uh, what we're looking to do is uh, get a structural 
inspection of, of that bridge. Um, usually the, the state DOT does a biennial inspection, but because this bridge is so small, it doesn't qualify to be inspected. So uh, we're looking to get an inspection to understand what the uh, what we what the needs are for that uh, that bridge. Um, I'm waiting for a quote from HVEA, who's our consultant on Hillside, and uh, the town of Ryer is going to solicit a quote from another engineering firm. Um, Beaver Swamp Brook, that's uh, you know flood improvements. Uh, that should not say Bridge New York there, um, but. Uh, we did a study maybe about five or six years ago. Uh, you know, there are a number of home, number of homes in the uh, the floodplain out there. It's not part of the Army Corps project, so uh, we we're investigating what type of uh, opportunities we had to do some flood mitigation. Uh, Glendale Road removal—that's the uh, in the town of Harrison where it juts into the river. Uh, Winfield Avenue—that's the bridge that I think has been closed since the 1950s, 1960s, based on uh, what that old sign looked like. Um, there's displays, uh, Marine Education Center, we have the touch tank, uh, an aquarium. Um, Dan, working... yes. before you go to the Marine Education, can I ask you about the uh, Waterworks uh, <clears throat> Dam, since we got a, another notice, I remember getting, we, we got one of those uh, red notices class, yeah. about four years ago as I was joining the board yeah. and we got another one. Is that here somewhere? Um, I, I believe it is. I'll Because I, I, I recall we kept it in, we had put it in there last year with two options. Uh, one was to rehab, one was to uh, take it, not take it down, but you know, remove a lot of it so we could uh, uh, reclassify it so it wasn't a class C high hazard. To decommission um, it. Decommission it, yes. Um, and I think I, it's some. It's later. We'll find it later. I, I think so, but if, if not, I'll, I'll I'll make sure it's in. But okay, because uh, I recall being I, I recall we included it last year with both options, right. so we could review it with the board. Yeah, and I um, remember it. But this 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 letter came a little stronger. That's what I yeah. bring it up. Okay. Um, parking. You know, we'd like to make some structural repairs to uh, the garage based on you know requirements from uh, the state. Uh, I'm putting in $60,000 for the uh, multi-space meters for West Boston Post Road. Um, I'm gonna, that number might be a little less when everything's said and done. I think, you know, the machines now cost about, you know, 6,000 a piece, but I'll, 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 that number might need to be refined. Uh, you know, uh, a van for the, uh, uh, the parking uh, department, you know, Right now, they have lots of things to carry around and tow it around. Um, you know, we're using a, a Nissan Leaf, which is barely doing the job. I mean, it's, it wasn't designed for the the type of uh, use that we're you we're using it for. Um, let's see, hardware, uh, parks department. So uh, several of these items, uh, specifically uh, these first two, the Toro Turf aerator and tank, and the John Deere loader. Uh, what we're proposing to do is uh, instead of contracting out on an annual basis for the seating and the, the twice a year seating and aerating that we're doing, uh, you know, bring that operation in house uh, with equipment uh, that we would purchase. And this would allow us to do more than just Harbor Island. We could actually uh, you know, provide some of the service to some of our larger parks like uh, Columbus Park, Florence Park. Uh, I spoke with um, uh, Jeff on and uh, Jason yesterday, and we're going to work up a memo to uh, for the board to demonstrate what the uh, the cost savings would be over 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 a period of time. Um, uh, we need to do some improvements to the basketball courts. Uh, could possibly use the rec funding for the rec recreation fund. Uh, the Jefferson Avenue Park improvements. Uh, you know, we need to. Uh, we'd like to do the safety surfacing uh, that we've done at other parks uh, here. Uh, for a number of years, we've been uh, trying to address one park every two years. So I think in 2014 we did Florence. In 2016 uh, was Warren. 2018 was Stanley Avenue. Uh, obviously, we, last year was last year. Uh, and 
uh, we'd like to make sure we, we do address Jefferson Avenue. This would include the safety surface, uh, you know, upgrading of some of the uh, 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 playground equipment and potentially some other site improvements just to make it a more friendly and usable park. Um, the Lanza Field backstop, um, you know, I don't know if that's eligible, eligible to be on the National Register, but it may be the original backstop from the 19 teens. Uh, it is, it's in bad shape. Uh, the Florence Park Tennis Court Rehab, uh, we, we, I think we did those tennis courts about 10 years ago, maybe. And, you know, they're, they need to be refreshed about every 10 years. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that. Uh, the pickleball court, pickleball court, that's something that's been identified uh, as a, you know, a desire and uh, something for the village and we'd look to do at Stanley Avenue. Um, we, another project here is the replacing of, of fencing and signage. Um, the, the fencing around many of our parks is in pretty bad shape. I mean, it's chain link, rusted metal, and we like to put it a little bit nicer there. Uh, and also perhaps have some unified design for signage at our, our at our parks. Because right now we just have kind of have the uh, the metal signs that you like a street sign. I think we want to do something that looks a little bit nicer, more inviting. Um, you know, I, I, I will tell Jason and the recreation staff often is, um, you know, people don't move to the village of Maranek for the quality of the assistant village manager. They come for the quality of our opportunities like our recreational facilities, the schools, our library. It's those types of things that that people like to see investments in. So you know, we want to, you know, make that, that look good. Um, we have the dog park. Um, that's been a, a topic of conversation for several years. We've had some more serious discussions uh, over the last what, eight or nine months, Nora. Yep. Okay. yep. Uh, the Harbor Island Park Playground. Um, it's it's getting to be in in, in rough shape. Uh, the Maintaining it is very difficult, especially you know, a lot of these playgrounds that were built with pressure treated wood, uh, you know, they, they have issues. Uh, getting the equipment is, replacement equipment is very difficult. Uh, based on my conversation with Jason, it's basically there's one, uh, one person who does this now who's up in Canada and the time frame between getting order equipment, getting equipment, maintaining it, it's, it's getting to be an issue. Uh, we've been asked about a harbor, uh, basketball court at Harbor Island Park, and uh, that's the quote we got for that. Can I ask a quick, uh, can, can we go back to the Harbor Island playground? I mean, sure. that was a donation to the village, right? There was the Harbor Island Conservancy raised the funds to to build the playground. That That's correct. I, I think right. it was probably in the, what, the late 80s, early 90s? No, well, it was redone. We, we, I know they've, 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 they've donated additional monies over the years they redid for, addition, the, for equipment. The, the, the equipment was all replaced... Yeah. Probably 17 or 18 years ago. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the playground equipment has useful life of 15 to 20 years. Um, you know, styles change. Um, you know, no, I'm just saying, you know, maybe yeah. that's something that the, um, you know, there was a group of people from the Conservancy that were very interested in it. Maybe they'd still be interested in it. Uh, we can only hope. Um, we have a general replacement of equipment for the Parks Department. Uh, you know, police department, you know, this is kind of their annual, you know, stuff. We have the uh, 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 fleet, that's for the uh, you know, police vehicles going to uh, uh, increase that a bit. Um, the prisoner van needs to be replaced in a couple of years, motorcycles in a couple of years. Uh, the PEO vehicles, you know, they're, they're driving Ford Priuses, uh, the plural Pri for Prius, I don't know. Uh, but the, um, you know, I think we got those in 2010, 2011. So they're starting to get to the end of their useful life too. Uh, so we're looking at in a couple of years, uh, marine vessel, motors, uh, radios, the, uh, the tasers, helmets. I mean, this is all kind of standard stuff. Um, you know, go down to the recreation where we have the Lanza lights, um, improvements to the blue and red room. Uh, this is stuff that's been deferred or you know, is kind of coming due. Uh, I think we've talked, uh, Jason and Jerry have spoken to the board about the, the lights at Lanza Field in the past, uh, looking to possibly convert to LED, um, trying to get grants to help with that. Um, yeah, these are just 
general uh, improvements around the uh, uh, the facility. Um, the sprays, the spray ground phase two. I have to revisit that number, but one, one second on the on the sure. lands of field lights. I see that one possible source is a soccer grant. So would this also convert lands of field into a soccer field? We could use it for that. Yes. Great. Thank you. I think that's kind of the hook is to try and yeah. be creative in how we can get some funding for this. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the spray ground uh, phase two. Um, you know, we did some uh, repair work. I think it was in 2019 uh, to the spray ground. Uh, we talked about the next phase of that because, again, you know, that is, you know, almost. I think it's got to be over 15 years that we've had that 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 spray ground at this point. Well, I think um, that phase two is enlarging it, correct? That's yeah, correct. Um, you know, I know we, we um, the reason I put CDBG <clears throat> there is because I recall that um, I'm aware that the village got CDBG funding for the original uh, spray ground, um, but um, that might be a little more difficult nowadays because of uh, certain uh, regulatory requirements and documentation that's now required for uh, CDBG grants that aren't uh, performed in what we call the low to moderate income areas. Um, does, this, does this phase two also include some water recirculation system or was this just, we're gonna continue? No, they, they, the problem about the water recirculation system is that um, it then becomes technically a sewer, you need Department of Health approval. It's a, yeah. it's a much larger um, program and, and operation at that point. It, it just, it doesn't, there, there's no value in moving to that as opposed to what we do right now. There's no economic value. Right, in, I, I'm, in, just look, I'm just worried about the water bills, which are already, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. and if you enlarge it, then the water bills go up. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway. Just you know, minor items. Um, I, I will make sure that the um, I will update this to include the um, uh, the uh, the dam, and I'll fix a couple of typos. But uh, that's kind of the the capital budget uh, for several years. We've ranked prioritized them. Um, I sent you a summarized uh, copy as well, just showing uh, the uh, the overall cost by department, mm -hmm. but. Um, are there you know, questions on specific projects in here or items you'd like to discuss? Or? Just do you, do you know offhand, Dan, if you add up all the priority one items for 2021, 22, what the total is? Um, I, I can, I'll look at the spreadsheet and I can get you that number either after this meeting or tomorrow morning. And I'll, okay. I'll copy the, the budget committee on that. Yeah, thanks. Anyone go, more? <clears throat> go ahead, Dan. Yep. What I don't understand is how the priority numbers have arrived there. Uh, because, well, I, I just don't understand them. Uh, some of the, you know, the priorities that the budget committee had suggested to the board as a policy, you know, rank things in turn, you know, very carefully uh, in terms of approaches as to what constitutes a priority or not. Um, that doesn't mean that a something that is not a number one or number two priority is not worthy of being undertaken. But I think what I'm seeing is a lot of things that are desirous as number one, but not necessarily, you know, you know I, I, we haven't identified, what bothers me about how what we've done here is we don't rank them in terms of what we are required to do under regulatory things, what we are what we should be doing in terms of safety. Um, there are programs or suggestions for capital projects that are not in here that have been suggested as high priority safety issues uh, that I don't see. Uh, there are things in here that are ranked number one, which I don't understand how they get to be at number one. Not saying that anything in here is not worthy of doing. I just, you know, the issue becomes uh, when I hear a whole bunch of stuff is being done one year because, quote, they're at the end of the useful life and we're going to renew everything at the same time. That means that in five, 10, or 15 years, whatever the end of the useful life is, we're faced again with all of those things coming to at one time. I don't know necessarily believe that that's the right and prudent planning approach. 
particularly if some can be spread out, uh, you know, and still be functional. Um, well, I, I, I think we, we try to do that, Dan. I mean, you look at something like our, our fleet replacement schedule, we do have a schedule. We don't, we're not replacing everything in, in a given year. No, uh, I, you know, same thing with, uh, you know, looking at the uh, vehicle, the pool vehicles for our building department, we're not proposing to replace everything in a single year. We know that, you know, you, you, that's not prudent, it's not proper, uh, and we do try to schedule it out over the course of several years. Um, you know, some of this stuff is, uh, you know, just uh, at, you know, on, its, uh, on the schedule to be replaced. I understand where you have multiple things being done in multiple years. I understand that. But I'm looking at a whole bunch of things that are being proposed in this year that are one shot items. And each time you went through them, you said it's sort of at the end of their useful life and we need to do something. So it seemed, you know, if you have 10 things like that or more, uh, that means that a future board has the same problem of doing them all in one year. I'm not sure that that is the most prudent approach. I'm not suggesting that where you have multiple things that you haven't thought about that. Do not misunderstand me. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to take a much broader view of it. Um, I don't know, don't see anything here that I would say is not worthy of consideration. Um, but, the, you know, I think we need to, you know, be cognizant of it. And when you say for the Army Corps of Engineers, you're spending uh, close to $8 million in the first year. Even if it were approved today, you wouldn't be sending $8 million in the first year. Right. But that, that's correct. But we would, uh, what would likely happen would be uh, we would request the funding authorization, which would be funded by debt. We would, the original purchaser would be encumbered in one fiscal year. We wouldn't encumber, we wouldn't necessarily encumber, every, you know, $5 here and $5 yeah, but there. The, here's my concern. The budget should be a functional and meaningful budget, not just a placeholder budget type of thing, um, in, in which is what we've done for most of the years. Uh, sometimes we use it, sometimes we don't, but we, it's not a f functional thing. We've been trying to move to better ranking and better uh, approaches to what is functional. If the Army Corps of Engineers project is approved this coming year, which, uh, you know, is what everybody is looking to see what happens. Um, and if it does, then the question is, what would we be spending in year one? What would we be spending in year two, et cetera? Those are the types of things that we should be planning out. You have in here the, a cost for a new village hall and a redoing of the um, firehouse in different memos at different times, the, the new village hall was instead of the firehouse. Now the firehouse it was then later proposed uh, for its renovation, um, you know, to as opposed to a new village hall. I, I think we need, you know, just because something has been suggested, I don't know that we should, I think we need to take a much harder look at this type of thing for budgeting. Um, and that that really is the type of thing that I think we really need to take a you know a hard look at. Uh, and I'm again, I'm not suggesting that anything is wrong. I just think that we need to have a better approach to what we want to do and what the cost benefit ratios are, uh, what's actually actually needed to make to keep us functioning um, versus what would be nice to have. You know what you know the uh, the, that which the big the, the big expenditures that are coming, which are not in here, are in the waterworks. Uh, all of these things affect all the rates that have to be paid. I think we have to take a look at a, a much more holistic view of what we're doing, so we understand what the cause and effect is. You know, Kelly, you're very correct. If we expand the uh, the spray, the you know, the spray ground uh, and double the size, it's the the water bill is more than doubled because we're we're raising the water rates dramatically, and so maybe you know it is more cost effective to do recycling and you know um, in the trend we're going, because we're going to spend millions of dollars 
uh, tens of millions of dollars in you know in the water waterworks and water fund, um, water fund. You're spending twenty million dollars, you know, on the sewers. Uh, you're spending uh, our share for the water treatment, uh, for whatever the the filtration plan, I guess it is, is uh, thirty two million dollars. Uh, you know, all of these things affect the rates, and, the, and I don't think we're actually looking hard enough at what the cause and effect issues are. And I think that's something we really need to do. All right. I, I want to make sure that Nora and Victor have a chance to speak as well. Nora? I have a couple. I'm sort of curious as to well, two, I have two, two real comments. One, I don't understand why priorities that are six and seven are in the 2021 budget and priorities that are higher are pushed down. So, and number two, you know, we don't we aren't going to be able to spend 19 almost 20 almost 20 million dollars so we're not going to be able to accomplish all of these capital projects this year so i mean no one's suggesting that any of these projects aren't worthy but i'm not sure how this helps us make informed decisions it's sort of a list of things we need to do but we still have to figure out how to fund them I think that I, I think that was my concern earlier when I was asking about how what are these rankings, and I think we're Dan and you and I and probably maybe Victor has the same concern. So Dan Sarnoff, I yep. the way I'm trying to think of this, and the why I asked, you know, how much is every, you know, uh, one ranked item in in this year's in you know the next year's budget, what that would what that total would be. So I can start to conceptualize this. And I'm trying to think, and I need you to correct me if I'm thinking of this incorrectly, um, that everything ranked as a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is kind of a, a wish list item, but that the ones are things that the the staff believes are emergencies that must be done this year. Am I thinking of this wrong? Um, yeah, yes and no. I mean, okay. I, I think so you know, if you look at the the, the, the total number, um, uh, I think the majority of that number is tied up in, in you know, three or four projects. Uh, the first being the Army Corps, uh, second being the sewers. Uh, I think it, we have multiple uh, appropriations with, with the sewers in there. Um, you know, as far as the rankings, uh, you know, just because something is a high priority doesn't, we, we know it's going to be high priority, but not necessarily this year. So for instance, you know, you look at, at the prisoner van, that's a high priority, but to make sure that we have a, a functioning prisoner van, but we know we don't need to replace it for a couple of years. Uh, but then, you know, uh, I look at uh, what I just did with the, uh, uh, the parks department, uh, you know, these two items are going to highlight right here you know, really do work in tandem with one another mm -hmm. uh, because the, the trying to bring that seating program in house uh, and the aerating program in house requires multiple pieces of equipment. So, um, you know, it, they're and, ranked sequentially. And as, and as Jeff explained, that actually has a, that's a money saving option. It, that it will is. save us money yeah. going forward. But I, I just sort of feel like maybe we need different to rank the priorities differently. Because we're so, not, we can't do everything. So, do you think it would be better instead of doing a one through X for the total number of projects, just do that traditional, you know, important or very important, somewhat important? Well, they, know, that I mean, type of a ranking. What do we have that's required? Statute, like, what are we required to do here? Uh, the the biggest item that we're required to are the required to do are, are the sewers. The sewers and yeah. the water treatment plan. Those are the two things that we are required yep. to do. And yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe the dam at the waterworks because there is that red flag letter. Yeah. So, uh, you know. And, and some of these uh, parks items, I know we, we talked about uh, how we're going to use the money we have in that recreation fund. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the projects we can you know, do sooner that rather than later. So that's not necessarily funded by uh, debt or some other uh, non-monetary form of, uh, of revenue. That's a proper way of saying it. 
I mean, like I'm looking at the CCC, the duck work for, for the HVAC okay. and duck work. Does, that seems like a big grant to get. That seems like a, that seems like a real long shot to me. Yeah. Not Victor, I don't know if you want to say or anything or not, because your, your, your screen is off and your mic is off. If you want to talk, I'd, I'd be happy to talk after you, but if not, I... Go, go ahead. I'm off because I'm trying to read from the screen. Uh, okay. Okay. Go not, ahead. Go ahead and I'll just follow with something very brief okay. after. I think it's on the same topic. Okay. Kelly's right. So uh, following up on Nora's issue of ranking, the budget committee did put forth a very thoughtful for ranking, and we're not using it. Now, if we don't want to use it, that's fine, but I think it's it goes to what Nora and have been talking to is trying to really understand what we need to do and the, the rankings were done very you know starting with what are you required to do on you know through a regulatory consent you know a law so, you know, then we went to safety then we went to a whole bunch of other things and you had five rankings and i think what we need we should do go back and re-rank these that way and also re-rank when we, you know, when we really think the money needs to be spent or funded. For instance, I can't see you spending, you know, set nine, uh, excuse me, $8 million for the Army Corps of Engineer project in year one. I can see you doing planning. I can see you doing potentially acquisitions, but that's long after it's you know, it's redone. Uh, in order for the, the core, uh, excuse me, for, in order for Congress to pa pass it, uh, the core has to update all of their numbers because it, it's past the timeline for having a cost benefit ratio. So, you know, I mean, these are types of things that we need to do. One of the other things that I don't see for equipment is we should keep a log of how much money we are spending on each, you know, each year on fixing equipment. So we have an idea to back, you know, the, the issue of that equipment has to be replaced because we're spending more to keep it up, you know, than it is to buy a new one. I think those are the useful types of things that staff could be very helpful in helping to set priorities. And I'm not suggesting that anybody is not doing a good job. I mean, trying to get all this stuff down is, you know, a major stuff. Um, but, you know, in the municipal, municipality five, which I happen to be a big supporter of, if, you know, hopefully it will do what it's supposed to do, but that will save us a great deal of time and energy, uh, you know, from staff having to spend money or spend a lot of time searching for stuff on FOIL, which should be readily available. You know, it is in other municipalities that are using municipality five. What I don't know, and I need Dan, I need you and Augie to verify that the 75,000 or whatever it is uh, for municipality, yeah, 75, is, is a full cost because what I've learned from other municipalities is there were add-ons to add-ons that they didn't realize they needed in order to make it as functional as we're trying to get it to be. Um, and, uh, you know, the, you know, that type of thing that saves money, you know, Jeff's thing, you know, of, you know, buy equipment didn't bring a program in house is great. As long as we have the, the personnel to do that, and we don't have to hire specialized personnel to undertake that. And if we do, we have to build that into what the costs are. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert on the park equipment, so I'm not trying to but I, but you know we've we've brought we've bought equipment in for different programs that we were bringing in house and found out they were not effective. Um, so we need to really understand those so we don't uh, misappropriate what we're doing. And I I think I'm not suggesting that's what uh, Jeff has suggested and you know uh, Dan and his allocations have suggested. Do not misunderstand me. But I, I you know I feel much more comfortable when I hear. It will take, this is what it's going to do. This is how much it can save. Our personnel are, you know, are able to undertake this. Um, we don't need additional personnel. We don't need, you know, um, specialized personnel. Or if we do, 
it, this is what the additional costs are going to be, and here's how it affects the cost benefit ratio. Uh, Victor, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I'm just I'm going to follow on the same topic. I'm looking at page 108 of our file tentative budget, and it has the scale of capital projects that that you're 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 discussing. I think it was. Uh, done with the help of the budget committee last year. And it's actually inserted here. And it was part of that big uh, stack of papers one by one that was done last year. And it's actually six criterion, starting with consent order, health and safety, equipment replacement, operational impact, BOT initiative, maintenance and improvement quality. Uh, I think we have examples of that as number one, varying from the sewer to maybe BOT initiative would be BOT initiative staff initiative. I don't think it should be BOT initiative uh, like uh, the municipality. So there has to be a way of combining those criteria, essentially all the work that was done last year, and then and then decant it, uh, filter it to the priorities that are not. We don't have how the priorities are are made here, but make like a second filter and then use the priority, uh, get, try to get to the priority numbers here so that we yeah. really know what those numbers mean and what the year means. So, so just a refinement and also because in any way we have this as a file document and what we have in front of us, Dan, I really appreciate it. It's, it's, it's useful because it's more visual uh, uh, and it's, it's really helpful. I appreciate the, your work, I think, it needs to include this other view so that everything is integrated. Okay. In a, in a simple way, I don't, because this one also, if you see the, the ones that we have in our budget, pages 109 to 120, they are, they just weigh the different criteria, but, but also leave you a little bit, um, uh, unclear actually where the priorities are. It ends up being a list, a, a ranking of staff rated priority, but it doesn't have a number. So yeah, this right. one gives you a better sense of how much and when. The other one did, gives you a better sense of, of why in the criterion. Integrating the criterion to the priority and explaining it might, might do the trick. I think it reconciles some of, some of the things that we're all saying. I, I will. Uh, I can update this and uh, you know have it ready by probably uh, uh, Friday or th Thursday or Friday. Understand, but Dan, uh, you know we know you're under pressure to having to do a lot of stuff. You know, and if you need help, I'm sure the budget committee can help you. Uh, you know, if that you know uh, or whatever. Uh, you know, I just I don't want it all to fall on your shoulders and uh, you know necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the suggestions and, and you know, comments, uh, there's nothing that has been just that's you know, totally out of whack or should uh, you know, take a, a, a long period of time. Um, I, I can do a quality review on these to uh, readjust the rankings. Uh, I can run a, a script or a, a, a something to show the cost by year by, by ranking. So uh, I, I, I I don't think anything that has been requested should take uh, more than a couple of hours of staff time. Okay. I think it would also be helpful if you're going to do that is to put whatever the ranking is in black and white so that when we go to number one or number two, we know exactly what was behind that number. What do you, what do you mean black and white? Well, if it's number one, what does number one mean? Oh, okay. Is that, is, is that because it's a I, I, thought, I thought you meant like the physical color, black and white. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no I'm just simply saying, you know, you have the six six things to rank. If we rank them in those six things, you know, it, maybe you need two columns. One is that ranking, and then another is what staff prefers, you know, for timing. All right. Immediate. Um, Vic, Victor, yeah. you look. You have another comment. Sorry, I, I, no, I just think we need to reserve a little time to the other fund, but- Yes, and, but I, and I wanna get to our, budget, to our budget committee members. 
Um, I do have a hard stop at seven because I have to run a uh, traffic commission meeting. But at six thirty stop. So okay, could could we, um, Glenn and Ellen, could you make it really quickly so that we could get to um, the waterworks before Victor has to leave at six thirty? Um, let's let's have Glenn speak. Augie, if you're the host. Glenn, they, they all want to speak now. Good evening. Uh, Go ahead. A little bit of good news. Um, ships for 2022. Uh, the village of Marinick is going to get 304,28.60. New York Pave is going up to 81,364.68. And Extreme Winter Recovery is going up to 66,391.13. All of them were raised. That's all passed in the budget. Um, when we talk about the capital budget, uh, we have to understand where our um, where our borrowing level is. As it is right now, we owe approximately 24 million on the general fund. That's excluding water and that's excluding sewer. So the first 1.7 million dollars that you spend would be money that we paid back. After that, basically every million you spend after that is a quarter of a percent on the following year's budget. So when you go through the budget and prioritize, you, you are going to see that you're going to reach that level very quickly between paved New York, uh, the uh, crane, which from my understand, the crane doesn't work. We had to rent the crane yesterday in order to move things down at the dock, at the docks. And hey, is, is there a question in here so that we can get Augie and Dan to answer it? Basically, you have to figure out how much money you're willing to borrow and understand the effect of that is going to be on your operating budget one year in the future for every million you spend over 1.7 million right now it's a quarter of a uh, percent increase in on the um on the property on the towards your property tax okay thanks let's go to ellen Thanks, Augie. Sure. Hi. Um, so in addition to what Dan mentioned um, about the priorities that we recommended from the budget committee, you know, must do safety, blah, 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 blah. One of the other recommendations that we mentioned was that the debt service level stay within the seven and a half to 10% level based on New York state guidelines. So I'm concerned at looking at this overall capital plan. And I agree the Army Corps project's not gonna happen in the next year, but we're still at a huge amount. And I think there's a lot of nice to haves. Um, so we need to look at what our debt service plan becomes with how much we're bonding to do all this stuff. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Ellen. Charles? Yep. Charles? Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, we can now, thank you. Great, thank you. I'm basically looking to recap uh, a lot of the points that were raised um, and try to consolidate them into a game plan going forward in a very accelerated window, unfortunately. Um, but it, it sounds like we're all on the same page that taking the criteria that we've identified through the one through five putting those in a column and then sorting accordingly is one. Two, if you take the Army Corps as an example, 
it's going to be critical to spread that across, say, the five-year window. And then from there, after that work's done spreading, to Ellen's point, if you're at debt service of 7.5% and you're in the range of the $8 million, you'll have somewhat of a line to draw where the cutoff is. And unfortunately, the non-critical, non-priority projects may need to just fall off below that line. Um, and then for you guys to work through, you know, what is mandated, what's required for safety, and then, you know, if there's not, not room for anything else, do all of those have to get pushed? And that gets into the five-year planning. So that, that's a lot to do quickly, but that seems like the best methodology. And then for you guys to realign yourselves to look at that and be in agreement as to the priorities being correct and where that line gets drawn. Thanks, Charles. Uh, Lynn? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, first of all, this was a great discussion. Um, but much is what, I mean, I think everyone covered the key points here, which I would categorize as priority, execution, and cost. Priority, as long as the board understands, and we all understand, that Dan Sarnoff, perhaps with Augie's help, is going to have to take what the departments ranked as their priorities and resort that in accordance with the criteria. So that's going to be a, a, a burden that Dan is going to going to carry. The cost issue, I think you all know that point. Um, but my key point here, I think, is execution. Um, looking over the capital spending over the last several years, it's all been less than, I think, $3 million. So one of the things we discussed in the budget committee was we could have these capital plans, but if we can't be sure that we can execute them in a timely basis um, in accordance with what the budget says, like the $5 million on the, on the sewer project, for example, then we should spread it out or have a more realistic view. But I think we've been weak understanding the issues in 2020, but I think we've been weak on the execution side in the past. Okay. Thank, thank you, um, Lynn. Let's jump to the waterworks discussion because Victor is down to 20 minutes. Um, the, uh, well, the latest email from the waterworks. Um, this is in regard to the, um, uh, the capital improvement plan for the waterworks. Uh, in terms of uh, their, uh, their local projects, uh, those being uh, solely in the village. Uh, the only one I think when I had my conversation uh, with the waterworks earlier today, I think the, the current uh, uh, local project is just the work they're doing on uh, Howard Avenue uh, to uh, replace the, uh, the main. Um, the other local projects are, are the, you know, the replacements of their infrastructure they will do uh, in advance or in following our uh, our paving program, and then the replacement of the transite pipes, uh, the asbestos pipes, as uh, they fail and they are needed to be replaced. Uh, obviously, the, the bigger ticket items are going to be the uh, the joint capital projects, specifically uh, the uh, filtration plant. Um, I don't know if anyone saw, but uh, uh, in looking at the journal news yesterday, uh, they've done they did a story on uh, the waterworks project. Uh, there was a video that accompanied that on their website with uh, Mr. Cutsey, who's the president of the waterworks, talking about the project, and you know basically saying it's a it's a one hundred million dollar project. Um, the village's share of the project is based on our pro rata use of the water, and that's recalculated every year, but it's usually somewhere around 26 to 28%. I think it's been 27.3, 27.8, sometimes a little bit less. Um, so, you know, on that project, that's, you know, a village cost of 
$27 million uh, to be funded through some method. I mean, I think uh, the staff has recommended that it be funded through the water fund uh, as opposed to the other uh, methods, but you know, those were some big policy decisions that I think the board's gonna have to have to discuss because um, the, the bill will come due on those. Uh, but in terms of uh, what was sent to me by the, uh, and what I forwarded to you from the waterworks, uh, their, their five-year joint capital plan, you know, it's $126 million. Obviously the majority of that, again, being the plant, uh, they have to do some up, upgrades to the, um, the storage, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, let's see, uh, the purchase water storage tank, which they're doing, um, uh, wholesale customer meters, which they've been doing, but uh, $26 million isn't Trump change, but when compared to $100 million, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a little, it's, it's a, a small comparison. Um, obviously, the, if you look at the presentation, the Waterworks has been seeking uh, outside funding. Um, you know, there are now tremendous opportunities for uh, stimulus money. Um, the, I, I, don't there, I don't think the Waterworks is eligible to get any of the, um, the Recovery Act money, but I think they've been going to uh, uh, the Environmental Facilities Corporation, the BEC. Um, if there are, perhaps there will be some more uh, you know, federal aid coming down the pike through the infrastructure bill that's being proposed. Um, I don't know about the timing of when the Waterworks is looking to proceed with that vis-a-vis if and when that gets approved and when funds become available. Um, I, I, I can try and answer some specific questions about the uh, Waterworks capital budget, um, but if I, I may have to follow up with them to uh, get some information. So um, the, what I said was somewhat generic just term my listing of projects, but there's any questions that I can try and answer about that or um, uh, you know, follow up on. Uh, I, I think we're still waiting to hear from Waterworks about uh, what they're projecting for a water rate, water rate increase, uh, and, but I haven't, we haven't had that conversation uh, with them at this time. When, when will that conversation occur roughly? Do you know, Dan? I, it, it's usually in the springtime, you know, April, May timeframe, but I can certainly, uh, follow up with uh, the uh, vice president and president of the uh, uh, utility to you know, let us know what, what they're looking at. Thanks. Um, Victor, I wanna be sure you guys have the opportunity to answer, ask your questions before anyone else since you're on your way out the door. yoo -hoo. Wait a second, I was trying to find something. Okay. Uh, I, I, we're, are we gonna, we we're gonna look at the other document or that, that's it? That's it for presentations? Uh, well, I, what I've emailed to the board, and I think what's been publicly, and I, I can uh, share this uh, screen if you'd like. Uh, let's see, let me, let me do that. Uh, what's been made publicly available was the capital budget, uh, the communication and presentation I received from the Joint Waterworks, and uh, I, sh I shared with the board uh, some calculations about the sewer fund, but um, I know this is a, uh, when you're talking, I think this is kind of a priority given the, uh, the just the great expense of, of uh, what you're looking at. Can everyone see the, um, the presentation from the Waterworks? Yes. Okay. Uh, so this is from that's last year. They, but that's what they presented to us a year ago. Yeah, this is what they just emailed to me again okay. today. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, read the text of a, uh, uh, an email. Um, you know, uh, there's some of the 2020 joint projects carried over to 2021. We had the first, uh, sorry, I think after being here till 945 last night, I'm slurring my words. Uh, we added the purchase booster pump station and PRV upgrade at 1.722 million. There's the UV facility and filter plant projects, which are ongoing. Um, we will likely have the shaft 22 chlorination project this year, which is a village of Mamaroneck uh, share of about 150,000. 
They said right now Howard Avenue is the only local project for 2021 at the estimated 275, which the board previously approved. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, there's, like I mentioned, they're, they're talking probably in this current year between paving, infrastructure replacements, uh, transite, transite main replacements, and the Howard Avenue projects, just our local projects being somewhere around one to two million dollars with the uh, pipe being the, uh, the largest expense. Dan, are there any changes in the, in the, in the um, water fund from what we have filed to the one that you emailed today, which I haven't been able to review? Uh, what I emailed was on the sewer fund. I didn't email anything okay. on the water fund. I, 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 I thought that I, my impression was about the water works capital work tonight not the water fund okay. in general. Okay, thank you. So. Uh, Dan, can you put in perspective what you think for the next two or three years, the water works to cost to the village would be in terms of dollars, not in terms of the rate, just in terms of dollars over the next you know, two to three years, each year? In terms of what, what are you talking about the village as in the village government or the village as in the village residents with their own water? The village residents are going to have to pay. Yeah. There's going to be bonding. In yeah. the, correct? Correct. Okay. So you, you, they're going to spend allegedly $19 million a year in, you know, in the first year. Yeah. Okay. And that's the village's share or that's the total cost? That's the total cost. So okay. um, just as a... Uh, let's just use the number of 28% uh, because it, it usually doesn't go above 28%. So um, for year one, you know, uh, 19, so, you know, 5,362 for year one. Uh, Ten million five hundred for year two. Uh, six million six fifty for year three. Uh, same for year four. Uh, uh, so it's six one six point one six for the last year. So overall, over the next five years, the village share is uh, $35,322,000. Okay, and then there's the operating costs. Correct. Uh, so the so the, the average family of four uh, uses, consumes 12,000 gallons of water a year, uh, which uh, is approximately 16 uh, CCF or 16, 100 cubic feet. Uh, I think our current rate is, uh, I don't have the current rate in front of me, but uh, if that's, you know, whatever, you know, we'll have to, Kind of figure out what to how to get from point A to point B when it comes to uh, proposing uh, water rates to the board for their consideration. But I think I think in general, and Augie, maybe you can correct me. I think it's uh, almost 50-50 between operating capital or or just within that range. Is, is that your recollection, Augie? I, I just I can't remember off the top of my head. Augie? <laughs> Are you muted? Yeah, I do not recollect. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I, I seem to think it's, 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 it's with a, a couple of percentage points either way, 
uh, app between the operating and the capital work that the Waterworks does. Um, obviously, the Waterworks largest uh, uh, fee, which sometimes or largest expense, which you know they don't always have control over, is the uh, the purchase of water from New York City. Um, so we, we can certainly ask uh, when the Waterworks comes to make their presentation to uh, address some of those questions. Uh, I think they're uh, much better attuned to some of those external factors. Yes, Victor. Can I share something for a minute? Absolutely. Let me uh, stop sharing my screen. Thank you. This is the town of Marinix capital budget. Yeah. Capital budget. Uh, you know, won't go over it, of course, it's too much, but they, of course, they have a narrative. My main point is that the Joint Waterworks is, is included. You'll see it now. Okay. They have a summary here, and this is how they do it. They do the third project from 2020, 2021 projects, and they have a total, total price of a budget, how, the much, the, how much they're going to bond it. Grant local services interfunds. So, so everything is summarized. And for example, Waterworks will be here. Um, water system improvement. We'll see them in a minute. They've been doing this for years. I, I don't even mean like to say we can do this this year, but this format is really clear and simple. You see it's divided by capital. Then you see they, they summarize by funding sources. Then they summarize by fund. Sewer district, capital district, uh, uh, vehicles, buildings. I'm just going to go recreation. So exactly what is being done the year. So once you have this this in place, it's easy to track year after year. So based on all the information we have, we could move into something like this. Um, and I, I just show it, not not uh, to see how we can move the net the next step towards something like this. Uh, here, water infrastructure, just to compare, they do have, they do identify how much they're going to spend this year on the lake, the right lake filtration plant, which is 650 almost, uh, the paving, the rehabilitation of the tank. So they, they know for certain, they've broken it down and they know it's 1.1170 1, 1, million. And then they go through the other departments. So my two points here is one, they do. There's somehow what what happens in the waterworks you're going to fund is reflected or is, is is noted in the budget. And two, they do have a system where they kind of really identify what's going to happen next year. So you know, it's a town, it's different, but but it it, it really uh, shows you uh, that you know it, it, we can break it down in, in, in this in, the, in a very useful way. I think this, this seems this seems to be very very useful. Even here, I see just just by looking here, they have municipality five land use. I was just whatever in information technology. They know exactly that they're going to to get to that. And how much does it cost for them? Thirty thousand uh, dollars. And it's a deferred project. So uh, you know, of course, we don't need to copy or anything. On those lines, but just to use it as, as, as a reference might be useful in the future. Yeah. Thanks, Victor. Um, Nora, Dan Natchez, do you have anything you'd like to say before we move to the budget committee? I, I'd rather just go to the budget committee. Yeah. Time is short. Yeah, that's fine with me, budget committee. Okay. All right, let's go in reverse order. Let's, oh, it's only Glenn. So, Glenn, go ahead. Yes, um, on the um, water and sewer, uh, can we um, get a uh, um, total of what we have expended so far, but have not yet bonded on the general fund, on uh, water projects and on sewer projects? Because I know we've already outlaid, like I think this year we spent $750,000 already on Wingfoot. So what money have we actually already expended but is not yet funded? That would be uh, gen general water and sewer projects 
and the uh, water rates are going to have to significantly go up by this because you don't even have uh, that list does not include local projects. So we have a whole list of local projects that we've already uh, either started or almost completed uh, Flagler Avenue, uh, Barry Avenue and such and you know hundreds of thousands of dollars that haven't even started to be uh, to be addressed yet so I would get a total of what we have spent what we are going to spend on local projects you have what we're going to do and when you discuss the water rates you're going to have to take that into account thank you thank you anyone else from the budget committee oh Ellen's hand is up I, the only thing I want to add, which I think you're all aware of, um, is as much as we keep focusing on the cap for village budget, I think we need to focus on the overall increases to all village residents, whether it's from the water fund, the sewer fund, or the uh, general taxes, because the residents pay all of it. So. It, it all goes hand in hand. And I just think we need to focus on where our big hits are coming from. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Anyone else, Charles or Lynn? Okay. Would we like to adjourn? Does anyone want to say anything else? Are we not going to go through the um, uh. water fund? Sewer fund or water? Say again. Yeah, yeah, sewer I'm building out. Good evening. Bye. Thank you, Victor. Thanks very much. Have a good night. Good night I'm Victor. sorry, Dan. Go. I'm the sorry. Last, the last time I had was the sewer fund. They the sewer fund tonight. Yeah. So um, again, I sent uh, the budget committee and the board kind of the, the the quick analysis of uh, the sewer fund, our rate, where it's at, and uh, as, how we compare it to the other member municipalities of the Joint Waterworks who actually does the uh, collection for us. Um, so I will share this. Um, uh, one second. Um, sorry, there's a fly. It's right here. Okay, uh, do you all see the budget preparation report parameters? Does everyone see this? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe the the quickest example, rather than looking, you know, going over each uh, detail item, is the last page where I kind of put the summary. Um, so right now, uh, the village's sewer rate is uh, eighty-seven cents per CCF. Um, the town of Maranek and town of Harrison both increased their sewer rate in December. Uh, the, the, they each uh, adopted a rate per gallon. So I just did the calculation to get it to the compare it to, to ours, which is by uh, CCF. So the town of Maranek is at $1.19 per CCF. The town village of Harrison is $1.17. Uh, based on what we've uh, uh, prepared, the, uh, our anticipated expenses uh, are at seven hundred seventy-five thousand nine hundred sixty-nine dollars. Uh, one thing we were looking to uh, shift some additional personnel uh, from the DPW over to the sewer department to make it more functional, especially given the amount of work that we're going to be doing over the next two years uh, with the lining uh, repairs, replacements, uh, everything else. Uh, Current revenues based on our rate and anticipated usage is $587,333. Uh, to generate an additional $188,000 or approximately $189,000 will require a zero rent fee of $1.15 uh, per 100 cubic feet, which would still be less than uh, the town of Ameranek and the town of Harrison. Uh, and just, I, uh, just for some uh, context, uh, 
the average, I, I don't know what the average bill is in the village. I mean, and that's gonna, I don't know how much utility is to, to tell you what the average is because it varies so widely. Um, the average family of four uses 192 uh, you know, cubic feet um, or annual fee of $167.04 over the current rate. Um, under, if we were to move to a new rate, or dollar fifteen, the average family of four uses one hundred ninety-two, uh, an average annual fee of two hundred twenty dollars uh, for the uh, sewer rent fee. Um, so yeah, we, we oh, I'm sorry, go right ahead. So to clarify, this sewer rent fee would be covering the I and I projects. It would recur. It would. It would be covering our current expenses. Uh, you know, as uh, you know, debt service payments come due. We'll have to revisit this, but um, in terms of uh, you know the current expenses uh, with the proposed uh, uh, transition of positions from DPW to the sewer front, uh, this is uh, what the rate would be. But, but so, how are we going to fund all the I and I work, all the sewer re rehabilitation and remediation that we're doing? Well. I mean, we're gonna have, we would have to increase the fee above and beyond once we know what the annual debt service would be. I, but I don't think we've gone out to debt. I, we haven't gone out to debt on any of this yet, have we, Augie? I don't like the, the big. But but yeah. I mean to, to Ellen's point, if this is the way we're gonna fund I and I, and then we're gonna use the water fund to cover the filtration plant, every resident's water and sewer bills are gonna go up. Yeah, that's correct. Even if we're staying under the tax cap, that's sort of a false equivalent because the they're going to have the, the, sewer, the sewer fund rate without the I and I uh, bond coverage is going up 32%. Yeah. Just based on these figures. You know, and the water rates are going to go up similarly. Uh, and um, beat a dead horse to, you know, but moving, you know, the, the people, the sewer fund is funding personnel, which are village employees that are controlled and supervised by village employees, um, but it's been taken out of the operating budget, as has the revenue been taken out of the operating budget, um, which helps the cap. Uh, but if you start putting all this together, we have real issues in the trending in a, in a adverse condition that we need to long term. Uh, you know, just to talk about the philosophy of the sewer fee, uh, we wanted several years ago, you know, the board, the staff recommended to create the sewer fee because the it's the impact is based on the usage. So, um, you know, some, you know, uh, uh, a, a two person family living in a, uh, you know, well to do you know, property would be paying uh, more towards uh, the sewer than their, uh, what their actual consumption was, and that that would be, you know, the same for every property in the village. Um, so, uh, sewer rents are fairly common nowadays. Um, I think we originally proposed it to the board uh, maybe in 2013, 2014. Uh, the town of Amerinik was actually, I think, the first member of the Waterworks to actually enact one. But there, 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 this is a, a policy matter, is a philosophy behind the how what the sewer rent is and why it was set up that way. It gives it gives the user some control over how much they pay because they can decide to conserve water, and it also spreads the fee over otherwise non taxed, non property tax users such as churches or nonprofits. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, I have a question on the comment that you made about DPW staff being shifted over to sewer. Yep. Um, do we do we feel confident then that DPW would be staffed enough to perform as they need to? Or yes, are we because that we um, might have to add then more DPW staff. No, I, I think we're fine on the staff because 
it's really more of a realignment towards what's actually happening in the field. Um, you know, we are, we do have, uh, you know, a, a worker helping the uh, sewer foreman full time and the assistant general foreman is spending a lot of time making sure that they're getting their work done in the field. So it, it, it's, it's really a, a realignment based on current operations as opposed to a new employee being shifted towards this full time. Okay, th thanks so much. Thanks. Dan or Nora? No, I mean, I think that's, you know, we're- I'd like to reserve it and let the of other- Of course, of course. Let, let the budget committee keep going. Okay, um, let's go to Charles. I think he put his hand up late last time, so. Thank I didn't you. see him until we'd moved on. Sorry about that, Charles, uh, no, go ahead. Appreciate it. Uh, were you guys planning on revisiting some of the outstanding items with respect to the operating budget tonight? No, not tonight. This is capital. Okay. And w was a decision reached whether you'd be reconvening uh, to further discuss the capital budget with the changes we talked about tonight and then some of the open items with the operating budget at a subsequent I, meeting? I think that's a discussion we'll need to have and look at scheduling when Tom and Victor are both part of the discussion. Okay, and it it sounded like the budget committee would not be participating in that last meeting from what I understand. Um, if that's the case, we wanted to just highlight a couple of points with respect to the operating budget that you guys could run with uh, at the upcoming meeting. That's, that's fine. Um, is that something you wanna do I, we're trying to add a, another meeting on the 20th for budget discussions, in addition to our meeting on the 27th. Is that right? It's 26th. 26th. Um, Charles, do you want to do that now? Do you want to do that by email? What's your preference? Uh, I could run through it quickly now. Um, if, 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 in particular, if we're not going to be attending the upcoming meetings, just so that we can put it out here now. And if you guys have any questions for us as a group to go live with, um, even though we're not really talking about that tonight, I thought it would make sense to put it out there. Sure, I appreciate that. Um, let me just ask, um, I need to get off this at seven o'clock sharp to start another meeting. Um, will that give you enough time? It, it will, it'll, okay. it'll be relatively quick. We've got bullets. Um, we discussed this as a, a committee and as a group. Um, Generally speaking, um, as I'm sure you guys are well aware, there's you know still some decisions to make with respect to expense reductions um, and thematically being conservative with them. Um, you know, one of the items that's been floating around is the the village attorney, and we suggest that a, a cost benefit analysis be conducted to you know to make a decision with respect to that one way or the other. Um, Obviously, the collective bargaining agreement um, with respect to the police, that's a loaded topic and that uh, that that has been considered in the context of expenses, um, salaries for non-union staff is another one. And that, again, you be conservative and make the anticipated expense reductions accordingly. Conversely, with respect to revenue, the, again, in, in the context of being conservative in this environment, I think the latest um, that we saw was a sales tax revenue reduction of $466,000. So we would recommend that. Um, this is probably not popular. It's hard for us to the, the stomach to some degree, but we, we are looking at a $1.3 million use of unassigned funds, um, which would actually put you $475,000 uh, below the minimum. But we think that that may be necessary. Um, and then to recover that, to get back up to the minimum, expense reductions going forward, potentially postponing new hires, hopefully the American Rescue Plan coming through to restore that back up to the minimum. 
we thought you might consider. Uh, it's not a huge number, but rather than being at the cap at the 297, maybe going down a little lower for optics. If you were to go down to 2%, uh, you'd be about a quarter of a million dollars below. So that's something to consider. Again, total budget, you know, with a shortfall in play, you know, taking the time to conservatively, you know, plan for that accordingly. Probably plan on utilizing the unassigned fund balance um, and, then, and then recovering that accordingly. Again, thematically, which also related to the capital budget, you know, we're definitely recommending that there be a, a, a long-term planning approach going forward. Um, we think that the, you know, the growth in expenses uh, is going to outpace our revenue going forward, and that we're going to have to come up with a plan to be able to address that over the long term. We're always here to help. You guys have a lot on your plate. Um, please let us know if we can help with any of this, including in the short term with the accelerated capital budget changes. Um, we're here if you need us. Thanks so much, Charles. Really appreciate that. Likewise. Um, let's see if we can get comments from Ellen and Glenn in before we need to close the meeting. So, uh, Ellen? Sure. Um, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yep. Okay, good. The only thing I want to say, in addition to what Charles just said, is the general public seems to think that the um, budget cap is 2%, not 2.97. So I think from an overall public relations perspective, coming in closer to the 2% plays a lot. Um, no one knows about 2.97. They know 2.2%. So I think that's kind of critical. That's all, thank you. Thank, thanks so much, Ellen. Thanks for your work on this. All right, Glenn. Glenn. Glenn? Glenn. Glenn, unmute yourself, Glenn. Maybe hey, Glenn is totally satisfied with everything. Hello, there you go. There we go. Yeah, um, just to touch quick, uh, once again, uh, you should get a number from Augie of what he's looking uh, bond-wise for sewer projects for next year. That way you can uh, take that into account when you deal with your sewer rate. Thank you. That's all? That's it. <laughs> Glenn, you shocked me. Um, we got to get right. out at 7 o'clock. I'm trying to give you a break here. I totally appreciate it. I really do. All right, Len. Len. Oh, his hand went down. Len, did you have something to say? Maybe not. Ellen, your hand's still up. Are you... Yes, right. I'm sorry. I think Augie was just slow on the draw okay. there. Okay. Uh, uh, first, thank you, Glenn, for uh, for allowing me so much time. But I just have something very simple to say. Um, looking at Dan's department summary, which was shared with the board as, I guess, a series of possibilities, I think it would be very helpful to the board and to the budget committee to present a one-page document of what the revenues are and expenses. So you can look at the budget in the aggregate, um, both from a revenue point of view and expense point of view. And you would have th three lines on the revenue, property taxes, non-property tax revenue, and the, um, and the general fund. And on the expense side, you could do it in one of two ways, by function, as in the audit, or by personnel, non-personnel, debt service, interfund transfers. But um, I think it would be very helpful to the board to, and for the community, quite frankly, to see the budget in the aggregate on the revenue and expense side. 
Thank yeah, you. That, yeah, I think in the past we may have included a pie chart with that, but not the actual numbers. I, I think, you know, to create the pie chart, to create the pie chart, you have to have the numbers. So I think we may have that already anyway. Yeah, I mean, I saw what was in the, uh, obviously in the, the budget message that went with the tentative budget, but what you never see is an integration of revenue and expenses on one page. And it's very difficult for the public, or quite frankly, um, for, for some of us on the budget committee to understand the state of affairs or the state of play right now. Um, so um, I think that'll be helpful because in this particular year, there are so many uncertainties or issues ar around like the village attorney, uh, around the expectations on the sales tax, for example, because I know this is discussions that we've had in the budget workshops in the past. And obviously you're close to adopting a final budget and the trustees as well as the public should understand from a overall point of view what, um, what the village revenues and its spending will be. Um, so that's, that's just my suggestion. All right, thank you, Lynn. Ellen, your hand's still up. Do you have something else to add before we leave? Ellen? Augie, can Ellen speak? Uh, sorry. Great. Uh, all right, I, I unmuted. So the only thing I wanted to say was, I appreciate this has all been a lot of work. Dan, Augie, Sally, who's not on the call, Jerry, who's not on the call, Everyone's done a lot of work. We probably still have more work to do, but I just wanted to thank everyone for all they've done. Very nice. And a good note to end on. Thank you, Ellen. Yep. Do we have a motion to close? You have Charles's hand up. I don't know why. I don't see it up. I don't see it up. It's up. Not, there it is. All right. I'm really trying to grab a yogurt before my next meeting. Charles? <laughs> no, it was, no, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you so much. All First right. Close. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And Augie, Dan Natch has Rose's hand. That was an aye, too. Yeah. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, Augie. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Thank Budget you. Committee. Good night. Have a yeah. great night. And see you feel, tomorrow. Feel free to come see me in the Traffic Commission meeting. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> aye. Thank you. I say my comments on one age. So. <laughs>